Hey guys, Dr. Gooden here, and in this video, I'll show you how to run a simple linear regression analysis in SPSS. Now, as we've talked about before on this channel, linear or bivariate simple regression is very valuable because oftentimes you have one variable that's difficult to measure and another variable that is a little bit easier to measure or maybe that you have the data for already. And you wanna be able to predict what this other variable is based on that first variable. Now, you can only do this when there's already um, a data set with both of those variables, corresponding variables within the same subjects. And there also has to be a strong degree of correlation between the two if you want to use regression for prediction. Now you can also use regression to try to explain uh, how much of one variable another variable accounts for. And what regression analysis will do is it will figure out how much variance is accounted for in this dependent variable based on that uh, predictor variable. In this video, we'll be examining a data set that we've used before, looking at sprint times and jump height. So go ahead and download it from the description below, click on the link, open it up in SPSS, and we'll take a look. Here we are in SPSS, and we can see that this is a data set of sprint times and jump heights. Now in this case, our question is, can we pre predict reliably 30 meter sprint time from jump height? And if you've seen previous videos, you've seen that there is a very strong correlation between these two variables. It's uh, about negative 0.83 or somewhere around there. And so what we want to be able to do then is create a regression equation using regression analysis so that a coach or sports scientist or a strength and conditioning coach could gather jump height data from athletes and then predict with some degree of reliability the sprint time. So all we need to do is go up to analyze, down to regression, and click on linear. And I've already run this analysis, so let me just remove all these so I can talk you through it. Okay, so what we want to do is in this first box right here, this is the dependent variable. This is the variable that you want to be able to predict or the variable, if you're not looking to predict, maybe you're looking to explain some of the variance in this variable by the independent variables. And so in that case, it is sprint time for us, whether we're trying to predict it or trying to explain the variance. Now we take jump height and we put that in the independent variables. That's the starting variable in your prediction. Now we uh, can leave the rest of these blank because this is just simple linear regression. You can go to statistics and I've selected confidence intervals. Um, the estimates and the model fit will be pre-selected for you, but I've, I also like to look at the 95% confidence interval. Hit continue. For plots, what I've done is taken the um, Z predicted uh, and put that for Y and the Z residuals and put that for X. And what we can do with that plot as well as with the histogram and the normal probability plot of the residuals, uh, we can make sure that this data set exhibits homoscedasticity, which is essentially saying that the error or the residuals are evenly distributed from low values to high values. And that is one of the criteria of running a linear regression that your data set has to satisfy. So we'll hit continue and we'll click OK. And we can ignore this first box. This is if you're doing multiple regression analysis. Uh, we can go right down to the model summary and we see this familiar 0.838. That's the um, overall R value for this model. And notice that this is the absolute value of the Pearson R correlation coefficient between these two variables that we've calculated in previous videos. The R square value, this is uh, essentially the coefficient of determination or the amount of variance accounted for in sprint time by jump height. And so 0.703, that's a little bit over 70% of the variance in sprint time is it accounted for by jump height. And, and that's a very high percent. Now the adjusted R square value, this is essentially adjusting this R, uh, sorry, this R right here, this R square value because of the sample size. Now, as the sample gets larger, as it approaches somewhere around 100, you will see the distance between these two, the R squared and the adjusted R squared value shrinking. And so you're essentially just accounting for the fact that you have a lower sample size. Uh, I believe we have 47 in this sample. And so it's going to adjust that um, accordingly. And then we have the standard error of the estimate. Now we can, uh, we can take a quick look at the ANOVA and this is essentially just giving us a p-value, a significance test um, 
for this regression and we see that it is in fact significant and we'll come down to these coefficients now here's the standardized beta coefficient and that's the same as the Pearson R value and we see that it is statistically significant we also see the constant here in this first row and we can see that it is statistically significant so if you are trying to create a regression equation you would take this unstandardized coefficient uh, and constant so 5.891 would be your uh, y-intercept and then the slope value would be negative point uh, negative 3.74 so what that is saying is for every one unit increase in jump height you get a negative 3.74 uh, decrease in sprint time and that might seem like a lot right if you chop 3.74 seconds off your your 30 meter sprint time uh, that's you know basically it's over like that now the reason why that number is so large is because we've measured jump height not in centimeters but in meters so this is saying for every uh, increase in your jump height by a meter you would take off 3.74 seconds from your sprint time so you know divide that by 100 and then you get the change from from a, an increase in one centimeter in your jump height so if you improve your jump height by one centimeter then if we move this decimal place over two you would be improving your sprint time by three tenths of a second and for the 30 meter sprint you know that is uh, that's a pretty decent change in your sprint time a pretty good improvement now let's come down here and observe our charts it looks like we have a relatively normal distribution and this plot of the residuals shows uh, that we have good homoscedasticity it's kind of a mouthful homoscedasticity meaning that these uh, these uh, plots right here really hug this line and really if we saw them deviating away from the line either at the right upper right or lower left uh, portion of this graph that would mean that maybe we're running into a case where we have heteroscedasticity meaning that the variance is not evenly distributed and same thing with the scatter plot scatter plot showing the uh, standardized predict predicted values versus the standardized residuals we want to see no relationship no discernible pattern here and uh, to my eyes it looks like there is none so that is a good thing that means that we are meeting the assumptions with our data set uh, that you need to meet in order to run a linear regression analysis and that's all there is to it now running the actual regression is the easy part right inputting the, uh, the correct uh, variables into the slots in SPSS, point and click, but then interpreting the results is really where it gets tricky. Now, if you wanna keep learning about statistical methods like regression or correlation or t-test, uh, click on over to one of the videos that appears somewhere on the screen so you can continue leveling up your stats game and improving the way that you interpret data, whether you are a coach or sports scientist or strength coach, hoping to make more sense of the data that you're collecting from your athletes. Or maybe you're just somebody who wants to learn stats and find that this video helps you do it. And that's great too. Now, if you had any questions about this video, let me know down in the comments. I'd love to engage with you there. Otherwise, I'll see you guys on the next video.